So I'm Sonia Solikari, I'm Director of the Museum of the Home, and I'm here in the home and studio of the incredible Richard Slee. <laughs> <laughs> and today we're going to be talking a bit about your influences, uh -huh. um, how you've got to the work that you've got to today at Bolton. Yeah. Um, and I think we can go way back really, can't we? I found this project quite different in the way I normally work, and it's thrown up a lot of questions for myself. In, in, uh, so, in what in what respect? What was because you've worked in well, nearly well out no, normally I I would work to no brief other than the kind of work what the, the space would be. In fact, in my career, I've, uh, I think I've only done three commissions. And what I would normally do would be to make a, a collection of works and uh, somehow a theme would emerge. This project, in some ways it's been restrictive, in some ways I'm kind of fighting against those restrictions. Early on, I didn't want to illustrate. I couldn't see the point in doing that. And the other thing I wanted to avoid was nostalgia. So I've been steering between, between that. Because I'm working primarily from a written archive. Mm -hmm. Well, the written archive is down to interpretation, whereas a photograph is less so, Yes, I think. So you can be kind of liberal with the language. So in, in one instance, I've taken just a spelling mistake. Oh, wow. Which has prompted a piece of work. What emerged was, I kind of said, essentially, this is about time. Mm -hmm. This is 1937, uh, and historically, you're looking back to that, yeah. that, that time. The more and more I read, that period of British history is very contemporary. There's, In terms uh, of the political anxiety? Yeah, 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 kind of, it's a very tense period. Mm -hmm. Appeasement, end of the Depression. Yeah. Beginning of the Second World War. Yeah, but that has been interesting, although the influence would be very tangential. Yeah. So you mentioned nostalgia and you yeah. wanted to avoid nostalgia. Yeah. How does one possibly do that, going back to a period which has been absolutely immersed in nostalgia and sentiment in terms of popular culture? What I was very conscious of, um, because, it's, it, because it's in Bolton, I wanted to avoid flat cap yes, nostalgia. I Although, you know, kind of I admire Lowry, you know, kind of mm -hmm. didn't want to go down that road in a way. To be nostalgic about a period which had great poverty, mm -hmm. I read The Road to Wigan Pier, and yes. that's harrowing yes. in its description of working class poverty. And it's interesting in the archive, there's very little evidence of that. Now, either that is the choice of the people, which is, as I understand it, was self choice yes. more than anything yeah. else. It comes out as very middle class, yeah. obviously literate. There are some kind of descriptions of working class uh, in interiors, but they're third hand. They're talking okay. about somebody else's mantelpiece. Yeah. Another an analysis of the mantelpieces are that uh, there are those who are kind of very formal, mm -hmm. so it's very symmetrical. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you, 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 you get candlestick vase, clock vase, candlestick. Yeah. So they're very conventional of, uh, you know, so, somehow the word got out, this is what you're supposed to do with your mantelpiece. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. But others are just dumping grounds. There's a lovely one where kind of someone complains about the untidiness of somebody else's mantelpiece. <laughs> kind of quite strongly. Yeah, well, it is, it is a focal point of the room. And I think one of the biggest questions for me with the mantelpiece is yeah. who is the inhabitant doing it for themselves yeah, or yeah. for others and the guests? Did you get, did you get a sense of that? The person, yeah, well, the, the kind of the, formal ones, display. you, you guess, they're, they're about kind of fitting in. They're a display of, of convention and they are something that's almost like a, a religion. It's almost like an altar. Yeah. But even the untidy ones are votive. It used to be in the Hornum and there was a, a Haitian kind of yeah, altar. So Altar, mm. which was kind of just a jumble of stuff. Yeah. But then, you know, you go into a church and the altar is exactly the same, candlestick, you know, but cross yeah. in the middle, not the clock. Yes. 
So you said that, um, you know, somehow people had this idea of what a mantelpiece should look like. Do you think we inherit this this idea of the mantelpiece going right back to, say, the Victorians, which was arguably... Yeah, there are, so there are some which are mm. typically Victorian because yeah. they have kind of a, a cloth covering the mantelpiece with uh, fringes. Yes, yes. One guess is that the candlesticks in most cases were purely leftover remnants of another age, mm. of, a, of a Victorian age, because the kind of uh, electric light was kind of, was everywhere. It was the electric age. Yes, it was kind yeah. of, there's one description where someone describes her, uh, not very favourably, but they're describing their mother's mantelpiece. And I think they kind of say, say something like, I hate everything that's on this mantelpiece. <laughs> Or, uh, dislike. <laughs> uh, dis, 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 People didn't hold back in this mass observation, did they? Well, uh, uh, that, that is a kind of like the, the original task. Uh, is quite precise, but yeah. a lot yeah. of people just ignored it completely. <laughs> You know, kind of, it was down to describe left to right. Some people just didn't bother. Yeah. You know, kind yes. of, uh, and they often kind of they were an excuse to get something off their chest. <laughs> they had schoolboy ones as well. Oh, yes. And there's a lovely one about their mother complaining about what they put on the mantelpiece. And my mother's kind of saying, it's, "It doesn't belong there." So, did you do you get a sense that the mantelpiece is a kind of site of like domestic antagonism for some Yeah, families. well, it, it's kind of, I also can remember from my own childhood me memory, mm. but it, it was a source of heat in, a, in yeah. the house. It, it, love it, I hate it. It was something you kind of gathered around. Yeah. So in terms of your own influences, because you have you have spoken in the past about, you know, the, an idea of the Victorians, which comes through very much from your, yeah, own, yeah, upbringing, yeah. your, your aunts and their yeah. Victorian home, and then perhaps your family's more Scandinavian influenced. Yeah, and, then, and, 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 and first going to art school and modernism yeah. being the like pantheon or whatever. Yeah. Um, but I can remember reading Pevner's a pioneers of modern design yeah. and there's a in part of a chapter there there's a an attack on victoriana mm -hmm. and there's a and there's an image mm -hmm. of kind of victorian vases and things and they were exactly the vases that i grew up with yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like I, I, I remember questioning although i was a kind of modest i wanted Originally, I wanted to be be an architect, and I wanted to be Corbusier, yeah. the Corbusier of Carlyle. <laughs> <laughs> it's a worthy ambition. <laughs> and cover, cover yeah. the land in concrete, you know. Yeah, kind yeah. Of, but um, uh, it did raise a question because I, said, I, I secretly I like this stuff. Okay, so was there a tension in your own earlier work between? Yeah, 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 the, uh, but, uh, yeah, yeah. There the was, and uh, the, the Victorian uh, Victoria thing came out of Margaret Thatcher <laughs> and her Victorian values. Yeah, and it also seemed to be a kind of a punk aesthetic. The Victorian, the sort of taking yeah, yeah, that, yeah, taking yeah. that. Yeah, 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 yeah. But kind sort of, of yeah. so as an act of small rebellion, you know, kind of yeah. started looking at Victorian and as I. I I still do. I, yes. I do enjoy the inventiveness and my recent collection of Victorian glass. Yes, which is stunning, actually. Which... Yeah. What I enjoy there is the crossover between industrialization and craft. Yeah. Because there's still great craft in it. But these were mass-produced, cheap objects. But it was kind of still mm. a very strong element of craft. So it seems like, you're, you know, you're often dealing with tensions. I mean... Can we talk a bit more about that sort of industrialization and craft and situating your own work in that narrative? Because obviously now it now in, now industrial processes in the UK are a kind of an endangered way of working. Yeah, yeah, they own, could, right? but, so, yeah, yeah. Arguably, a lot of them have yeah. died out. Certainly, there's long been a question mark about where the ceramic industry is going in the UK, and you know, yeah, recently yeah. there does seem to have been a resurgence of what people might call craft and certainly the art ceramic at the same time the industrial ceramic is kind of disappearing 
in, yeah. in terms of it being something that is British manufactured. So I wondered if you've yeah. been, ever... Well, when I was a student at the, at the Central School of Art and Design, the ethos of a department was that one looked towards 18th century British ceramics, and it was a reaction against uh, the Anglo-Oriental School of Leach in kind of yeah. college. <laughs> yes. Uh, Leach and Cardew lived at Camberwell, and sometimes they would bring down press from Stoke-on-Trent to show us how to do yeah, things. Yes. And we would go up to Stoke-on-Trent and look at the uh, the factories then, which was in decline then, but still in full swing. It was kind of, it was mm. sort of still a, a fairly vibrant industry. It hadn't started moving out of Stoke-on-Trent. Yeah. And we were inspired by a lot of those techniques and skills and a kind of, I suppose it's a skill of certitude rather than kind of skill of accident. Yeah. I'm still obviously influenced by that industrialization of everything is, is handmade. I don't, mm. I use very few kind of uh, industrial techniques, but the product looks, I suppose, pseudo industrial. In, in 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 a way, uh, yeah. it, it, it doesn't have that kind of. Um, I'm not really kind of comfortable with what I term a happy accident. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so there's there's a more of a degree of planning and. It, yeah, yeah. I'm pre very work. precise yeah. about yes. what I do, yes. and very particular about the quality of what I do. Yeah. It's trying to get. Especially with kind of, this is a technical thing, but with glaze cut colours, mm -hmm. because I mainly use a kind of a, a relatively low temperature and earthen, earthenware glaze. It's often very difficult to get an equality out of out of an earthenware glaze. So it's kind of very particular about kind of layering glazes and colours and kind of. Uh, so, so your your work is very much ca characterized by these strong colors and and and, yeah. you know, and and sort of like glossy smoothness. Yeah, is yeah. that something? Glossy is good, matte yeah. is bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can we? I mean, you might not want to give anything away, but can we expect some gloss in the Bolton Commission? Is, yeah, 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 that... yeah. Okay. <laughs> you are probably ninety eight percent gloss. <laughs> With the odd bit of mat. Um, <laughs> well, it is ceramic, hard, and that's what yeah. I think oh, yes. ceramic is. Going back to my kind of education at the Central School, there were lots of matte glazes which were mm. deemed as being very modernistic. Uh, glossy is often kind of associated with, well, it's the whole yeah, kind of thing. Yeah. Glossy can be used as a der derogatory term. You know, it bright and glossy. Yeah. But I suppose this might go back to some of your American influences. So uh, yeah, when you yeah, yeah well, the States, they, 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 very yeah. definitely. That was a primary kind of influence in in colour. And when I first went to America in the nineteen seventies, yeah. I had an illustrator friend who collected what was called refrigerator uh, ceramics. These were ceramics made to be given away with refrigerators. Mm -hmm. Main, mainly as water coolers, and they were all in different bright California colours. Yeah. And that was, was kind of, you know, I, 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 I remember kind of seeing, this is, sounds so silly now, but um, a cup and saucer, mm. and the cup would be blue and the saucer would be yellow, and I thought that was so radical. Yeah. At that time, it yeah. would be radical in Britain, I think. Yeah, absolutely. And so that was something that which you directly took and incorporated into your work. Yeah, so yes. It was almost, almost immediately your work. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. I kind of, uh, and, a, and a reaction against kind of green and brown ash glazes of a kind of a yeah. leech and cardio school. Yeah. A big influence was uh, an American called Ken Price. Yeah who I kind of saw two shows in London in the 60s and they weren't glazed, they were kind of used car enamel, which a lot of ceramicists at that time, you know, be, be shouting Judas, you know, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do that, you know. No, kind of. and, and they're quite sort of biomorphic, yeah, erotic yeah, pieces as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, do you think, pulling it back to the mantelpiece, do you think there's anything erotic about the mantelpiece? The fireplace that, uh, <laughs> or is that a purely I, functional I, part I, of the I, 
Well, this, this is it. I have made one piece which is heavily influenced by a René Magritte painting called Time Transfixed. Yes, it's the yes. one with the steam engine okay. coming out of that. That's obviously yeah. yes. uh, a, a kind of phallic reference. Mm. I think it's either 1936 or 1937. Yeah, so right. It, so it fits in with the time. Mm. But also surrealism is mm. kind of English surrealism is emerging. Yeah. It, British Surrealism exhibition in London had an enormous amount of visitors. Do you, do you think Surrealism changed the way that people started to see their domestic environment? Um, no. <laughs> no, no, it. Surrealism yeah. you know, it, it, it took very much from the domestic environment, yeah. uh, you know, the uncanny object. Mm -hmm. But that's unconscious. That, uh, that's yes. not conscious. No, no, in indeed. And, and when, were you reading that into the mass observation testimonies when you did? You have an idea of the unconscious when you were reading those pieces, or did you? Um, uh, maybe not con mm -hmm. but unconscious. Like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there are so many layers here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, no, no. no. Um, but you've been fascinated uh, they, with... Well, they, uh, that's inter interesting, because I kind of... When I started working on, on this, I kind of... I, I thought, well, do I take everything literally? Mm. And there were uh, a couple of pieces where, which are quite detailed in their kind of... in, in their description. A kind of, there's a description of two Toby jugs, which is very detailed. Yeah. Down to the colour kind of thing. But you still don't know what the Toby Jug looked like. No. So I've taken that very literally and tried to remake in a way. But sometimes, like the spelling mistake, yeah. that's both literal but not literal for the yeah. person who originally typed it out. Yes. Well, it's very, it's very human as well, isn't it? Just, you know, that, that the yeah, yeah, spelling yeah. mistake, it's... Well, I get, that's a great thing about the the archive. You get this mm -hmm. kind of this kind of very hu human element about it. They're not, as I understand it, the original work town study was very anthropological mm. and very cold. And this is very very different because it's non scientific. It's yeah. kind of and it's very personal, and the humanity comes out out of it.